Today's recipe calls for red bell pepper. I'm going to show you how to turn this thing into pasta sauce. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is turn our oven on to the broiler. You want it on the highest setting and you want your rack as close to the broiler as possible. The next thing we're going to do is take four medium sized red bell peppers. We're going to coat them all in a neutral tasting oil. You want to ensure that you get in there nice and deep like in all the nooks and crannies with the oil. This will help during the roasting process. Now that you have all of your bell peppers greased, we're going to throw them in the oven. Now that our peppers have been in the oven for a little while, this is what they look like. They have that nice black char of them and that's what we're going for. You're gonna keep rotating all of your peppers until all of the sides have that nice roasted color to them. Once you've flipped them over, throw them back in the oven until they're completely done. In the end, this is what your bell peppers should look like. They have that nice roasted color to them on all the sides. The next thing you're gonna do is grab a holding apparatus or a bowl in my case and throw all of your peppers into your bowl. Then you're gonna grab some saran wrap and cover your peppers. This will trap in all the heat and steam which in turn will make it easier to peel the skins off of our peppers later. You want to ensure that you have a nice tight seal to keep in all that heat. We're going to let those hang out for about five to six minutes. Now that our peppers are at the sweat lodge, you're going to grab one medium sized yellow onion and we're going to slice it into quarter inch thick slices starting from the top cutting towards the root. The next thing we're going to do is grab six to seven garlic cloves. We're going to thinly slice our garlic now that our garlic has been sliced, you're going to grab six medium sized basil leaves and we're going to chiffonade our basil. We're basically turning our basil into confetti. Now that we have most of our prep done, we're going to start to peel all of our bell peppers. So grab yourself an extra bowl to keep the peeled peppers separate from the other ones. And we're going to start to peel them and this is what your peeled pepper skins should look like, something like this. And it should come off really easy since they've been in the little sauna for quite a while. You can totally skip this step and not peel your bell peppers, but peeling them will give us a nice smooth texture in our sauce. And a little pro tip for you is when you first start peeling all of your peppers, you're going to rip them all open at the same time. This way it'll release some of the steam that it's holding. This is what your peeled pepper should look like. Shouldn't have any of the black charred skin on them and it shouldn't have any of the seeds as well. And the best way to get rid of all the seeds is to pull the stem out all at one time and you'll get most of the seeds out when you do that. Now that all of our peppers have been cleaned up and there's no seeds or skin, you're gonna cut your peppers into medium sized chunks. Now that we have everything cut and prepped and ready to go, you're gonna grab a large saucepan and some neutral tasting oil. And you're gonna add enough oil to your pan until the bottom is completely covered and coated with oil. You're gonna set this over medium heat and we're gonna let this heat up before we add our onions. Now that our pan is nice and hot, we're gonna add our sliced onions straight to our pan. We're gonna saute our onions until they become nice and caramelized so we get a nice deep rich flavor to our sauce. Once you have all of your onions in your pan, you're gonna give it the quick stir to ensure everything is coated in our oil. Now that our onions have that nice golden caramelized color to them, we're gonna add one tablespoon of tomato paste to our pan. Now that we've added our tomato paste to our pan, we're gonna cook it for about five to six minutes or until it becomes a nice deep red color. Sauteing our tomato paste will caramelize some of the natural sugars that it holds and it'll intensify the tomato flavor. Now that we have that nice dark rich red color to our tomato paste, we're going to add all of our sliced garlic to our pan. We're going to saute our garlic until it becomes nice and fragrant in smell. And you'll notice we have a ton of fond building up on the bottom of our pan, which is totally fine. And it's a good thing because it'll add a ton of flavor to our sauce later on. It's all that golden brown stuff that's stuck on the bottom of your pan. We got this from caramelizing our onions and our tomato paste. Now that our garlic has been sauteed, we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. We're going to saute them for about 30 to 40 seconds or until they become nice and fragrant. Now that our pan is nice and spicy boy, we're going to add our roasted red bell peppers to our pan. You want to add the juice as well to your pan. We're going to deglaze our pan with the bell pepper juice and scrape the bottom of our pan to get all that fond up so it incorporates into our sauce to make it super delicious. Our bell peppers are pretty much cooked all the way through but we're going to saute them for about two to three minutes and you don't want to cook off all the liquid that we got from our bell peppers because we want to keep some of that liquid to really intensify the bell pepper flavor for our sauce. Now that our peppers have had some time to cook we're going to add one and one half cup 
or 350 mils of vegetable stock. The next thing we're gonna add is half a cup or 118 mils of heavy cream. Now that we have all the liquids added to our pot, we're gonna add our fresh chopped basil. You're gonna add your basil now. This way it'll simmer with our sauce, which will intensify the basil flavor. And we're gonna bring our pot to a light simmer over medium low heat. This will allow the heavy cream to start to thicken up and for all of our flavors to meld together. Once your sauce starts to lightly bubble, you're gonna take it off the heat and set it aside so we can move on to the next step of blending all of our goods together to make our pasta sauce. The next thing we're gonna do is bust out your favorite blender. We're gonna start to add all of our contents from our pot into our blender. You first wanna put all of the chunks of the peppers and onions in the bottom of your blender. This way, when we go to pour the liquid from our pot into our blender jar, a bunch of those chunks aren't gonna fall out and make the liquid splash up at your face. Now that we have all of our goodies in our blender, it's time to blend up our sauce. But first, it's really important to always pulse or blitz a hot liquid like this. You wanna pulse it a couple times and open the vent hole at the top of your blender. This way, a lot of the steam can be released from our blender jar, because if you don't do this, a lot of the steam is gonna be trapped inside, which under pressure could potentially pop the lid off, which will shoot a bunch of hot liquid everywhere. Once you do that, you can start to fully blend up your sauce. You wanna blend your sauce until it becomes nice and smooth in texture. Now that you've blended your sauce, you're going to vent it once again this way the steam can be released and then you're going to wait 30 to 40 seconds before you take your lid off because your sauce is going to burp from all that trap steam at the bottom so a little bit of the liquid is going to pop up but once that's done you can take your lid off and check out your sauce once you've done all that you're going to grab a spoon and give your sauce a quick taste we're going to adjust the seasoning as needed and if your sauce seems a little thin right now don't worry we'll fix that here in a second i adjusted the seasoning on mine with a few pinches of coarse ground kosher salt then I also added three teaspoons of white distilled vinegar. After you've added those two things, you're going to give it a quick blitz to mix everything into your sauce. If your sauce isn't as thick as you would like, you're going to throw it in a pot and throw it over low to medium low heat. And we're going to reduce our sauce down a quarter of the way so it slightly thickens up. Once our sauce is reducing, you're going to grab a pot of water and throw it over high heat. This will be for our pasta. So you want to season it really well with some coarse ground kosher salt. And if you want your water to come up to a boil faster, throw a lid on it, which will trap in all the heat and the steam, which in turn will make your pot of water come to a boil a lot faster. And when you're reducing your sauce, you want to use a rubber spatula and really stir on the bottom to ensure nothing's burning. And you want to scrape down the sides. This way the sides won't get all crusty and gross. And you're going to reduce this, like I said, a quarter of the way or until it's the right thickness of your choice. It should look something roughly like this. Once it's to your desired thickness, you're going to set it aside so we can cook our pasta. Now that our water is rage boiling, we're gonna add our pasta to our pot. You can use any type of pasta of your choice. And I recommend that you cook your pasta two minutes shy of what the recommended time on the packaging says, because when we go to cook our pasta with our sauce and coat everything really well together, it's gonna cook a little bit more when we go to do that. So we'll finish cooking it in our sauce, which in turn will give us this perfect al dente pasta. And when you first drop your pasta, you wanna give it a quick stir. You wanna periodically give your pot the stir when it's boiling as well. This will prevent the pasta from sticking to the bottom of the pot or sticking together to make one giant clump of pasta. Right before your pasta is about to be done, you're gonna grab a measuring cup and you're gonna measure out about a cup worth of pasta water. We'll use this later on to thicken and thin our sauce out. Once your pasta is done, you're gonna grab your pasta pot holders to go to dump your pasta. Now that you have all of your pasta drained, you're gonna use the same pot again. You're gonna throw in a couple ladle spoons full of your sauce into your pan, and then we're gonna dump our pasta right on top. Now that you have your pot added to your pot, you're gonna give everything a quick stir together. You can use as much or as little sauce as you want. It's really up to you on how saucy you want this thing to be. Then my pasta is close to being done and it's nice and saucy like I want it. I'm gonna add a small splash of our pasta water. The pasta water is gonna slightly thin out our sauce, but once we cook it down, just a touch, it'll also thicken up because all of the gluten that's in the pasta water, which in turn will make the sauce nice and thick and it'll coat our pasta really well. Now that it's done to your liking, you're gonna grab your favorite never ending pasta bowl. We're gonna start to plate up our roasted red pepper pasta. You're gonna try to stack everything in the middle and on, on top of each other. This way we get some nice height for that sweet aesthetic look. Then we're gonna shave some Parmesan Reggiano right on top, to make it look nice and cheesy. Then to finish off we're gonna add some freshly torn basil to add that pop of color and some freshness as well now grab a fork and start to dig in and enjoy 
All right, now that our pasta is done, let's give it the old taste of roux. Right off the bat, it's nice and aesthetically pleasing. It's got that nice bright red color and then that basil on top adds a little pop up green to offset the red. Kind of looks like a rigatoni olive vodka. I'm super excited to try it. So let's dig in. This fork was a bad idea. Our pasta came out super tasty. That first flavor we get is that roasted red pepper, which is super delicious. Then we get some onion and garlic flavor as well. Then we get a bit of sweetness from the natural sugars that the red peppers hold themselves, and then a little bit of sweetness from our caramelized onions. But with that vinegar we added is the acid, which helps cut through that sweetness, and the fat from the heavy cream, which makes it well balanced overall. Then that fresh basil adds that pop of freshness. Then we get a little bit of saltiness from our Parmesan cheese, and it also brings that cheesy flavor, which is always super delicious. Then we get a little bit of roasted tomato paste in the background as well, so it's that nice, robust tomato flavor. Overall, this pasta is super banging, and you have to make it. All right, that's it for today's video. This recipe was really easy to make. There's not a whole lot to it, and it was a ton of fun to make as well because it's something different instead of making an old tomato sauce for our pasta. I really enjoyed it. I think this is better than tomato sauce, but don't tell anybody. Anyways, you can make this recipe any which way you want. Maybe make it vegan, or when you finish your pasta, add some homemade roasted garlic butter, which sounds even more tasty. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching, and I cut my thingy on a little blender when I was reaching for my microplane, and it really hurt, and now I'm gonna cry and collect my tears for a different recipe. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. See you on the next one. I'm gonna show you how to turn this thing into a pot. Into a pot. Yeah? Finger guns. I said use this big fork, it'd be funny. They said. It's a pain. Mm. Staring into the camera like a weirdo. <laughs>